Hello and welcome everyone to the small village of Sissikon, Switzerland for stop number four of the 2018 Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series. The scenery in the Swiss, Swiss Alps, absolutely stunning, sold out capacity crowd of over 8,200. They're filling in every ounce of water and surface. Great viewing to watch these guys dive 27 meters into the colorful and picturesque Lake Lucerne. Look at that. It is packed with everybody floating on anything buoyant down there. I'm Trace Worthington, great to have you with us from this scenic location. It's been eight years since this prestigious competition has appeared in Sisakon off the Uri Stone Cliff Face. We're about to begin the fourth and final round for both the men and the women, but first let's get you up to speed on what Red Bull Cliff Diving is all about. Well, there you have it. Now you're up to speed and, and a Red Bull cliff diving expert. Joey Zuber now joins me. Speaking of experts, Jay-Z, which of the female divers are looking good after three rounds here in Sisakon? Okay. First up, from round one, we have Adriani Jimenez. She was off to a good start. She's the current World Series leader. And there she is on the platform. So this is the required dive round. Front double somersault in the pike position. Smooth and elegant. Scoring two nines from the judges. She faltered slightly in her second round dive, which has opened the door for two times World Series champion Rihanna Nifland on the platform. This is an optional dive round. Round two, superb entry once again. She's so good in competition, knows really how to turn up the heat when it counts. There's the inward triple somersault in the tuck position and that Barani manoeuvre from her trampoline days. Now round three, going back to the more simple and graceful dives. Flying back somersault from Lissan Richard from Canada. And look at that, drawing down the water for a rip entry. The mother of three, Cirque du Soleil performer and a fine cliff diver. So great round three for the women. Four to total rounds for both the women and the men. All four dives are added together for the grand total as we look at spectacular weather conditions. 30 degrees Celsius, 86 degrees Fahrenheit. It is toasty and hot outside. The water is warm at 21 degrees Celsius, 70 degrees Fahrenheit. The water depth where the divers hit, six meters or 20 feet. And Joey, really a little bit of a breeze rolling in and out, but no excuses for any of the divers. Anna Batter, she has removed herself from this competition from some psychological and injuries from earlier. And Irish Smith Bauer, it is reverse order from low scores to top scores after three rounds of diving. Lisanne Richard looking very solid, and Rhiannon Ifland, the two time Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series lead, er, er, leads the way after three rounds of diving. And the one to beat, and there she is in the warm up area, tuning out, checking out. And she had a little bit of a slow start to the season, Joey, but now is picking things up as Adriana Jimenez leads the way. Iflin has her sights on that number one spot. There we have Iris Schmidbauer from Germany, now residing in Plymouth in England, studying sports science. Now she's visualizing the dive. You have to picture the dive perfectly in your mind before the execution. Fourth and final round, it's all about degree of difficulty, pushing the limits with the maximum number of somersaults and twists. An inward triple somersault in the tuck position, standing backwards and spinning in towards the platform. Judge is ready. Lacking the finishing touches for Edith Schmidbauer. 
but she comes up looking happy. There's a lot of nervous energy on the platform before you attempt the dive. You understand the risk at hand. The biggest fear for the athletes is actually losing your way in the air, and that happens when you're a young athlete training from those lower heights. You have to spend a lot of time on the trampoline in a harness with the coach, helping you spot the water, helping you feel your way in the air. Here she's feeling it, the heavy sensation as she comes by the water. Heavy again, right at this point, she comes out. There's that Barani. This comes from trampolining. That is a front somersault with a half twist, and they land feet first on the trampoline. And that is why it applies to cliff diving. They must land feet first due to the velocity and the speed upon impact. 71 kilometers per hour from a 21 meter platform. Trace Worthington. 10 G's of physical force when hitting that water. Schmidbauer of Germany. So 62.7 on that. Remember, five judges, the high and the lower toss, the remaining three multiplied by the degree of difficulty. So she has a grand total right now, 235.30. So that'll kick things off in the women's fourth and final round is everything buoyant is out there in Lake Luzerne. Motorboats, canoes, kayaks, kite sailors, and windsurfers, sailboats, and dinghies, everything. Jackie Valente, the wild card diver of Brazil, looks down upon the 8,200 sold out crowd here in the small town of Sisicon that only has a population of 382 people. Very high degree of difficulty for Jacqueline Valente. Is she doing arm her stand, arm stand here? Arm stand back, two and a half somersaults with two twists. Second highest DD or degree of difficulty in this round. The gymnastic and acrobatic background plays in her favor with these handstand dives. Maybe some yoga helps too. Look at this. So much strength. Here we go. Okay, lacking the finishing touches a little for the entry, but we salute her for attempting the handstand on the platform. I mean, trying these dives, you're already shaking standing on your feet, but standing on your hands, you need a lot of control. You've got to take your time. It's very easy to overbalance and come down from the handstand. So she's done a great job to start the dive, but didn't finish it yeah. all that well. You have to back up the high degree of difficulty with a good entry. So do you get awarded for the high DD? And maybe the judges get are a little bit more lenient on the landing or no? No, it doesn't. So you're basically judging the dive based upon the execution. Is it aesthetically pleasing? Is the takeoff nice and strong? Are the toes pointed? Are the legs together? Is the vertical entry applied at the end of the dive? And you can see looking a bit hesitant with the legs splitting apart there, pulling the feet in front, and that has caused what we say as an over-rotation. She's gone past that vertical line. Unfortunate, but a very difficult dive. Five judges, high in the low toss. Middle three, yeah. multiplied by the degree of difficulty. Orlando Duque injured himself at our last stop in Portugal, but he is such a legend, and he is out here supporting all the athletes. He comes out here, coaches him, gives him advice, gives him hints. It's not all about him. You got to love the guy. And you should pay attention when he gives you some advice. Yeah. 20 <laughs> years of cliff diving experience and a good, let's say, 10 to 11 years of diving experience. Speaking of experience, the most senior female diver on this World Series, Ginger Huber of the United States, 43 years old. She was in ESPN's body issue as a model in 2014. Just lives and breathes diving. Absolutely loves it. Still yet to win a World Series after 20 starts. Second is her best. Ginger Huber had a knee injury at the last stop in Chile in 2017 lowering the degree of difficulty in with double somersault. The bell signifying the judges are ready. Wolf looking smooth as silk as she hit the water. You can see that water spray splashing 
into the landing zone. Now, Trace, that is to help the divers see the surface. It doesn't make the landing any softer, so let's break that myth right there. And the scuba divers will also give additional splash. Right. There's the inward double somersault. Arms coming above the head to slow the dive down to put the air brakes on, making the body longer. Watch how the arms will throw, just like you're throwing a soccer ball. There's a pike position, so you need to show the dive exactly as described in your dive sheet that you submit to the judges. Now she's a performer, there's where the arms go above the head. She's a performer in a lot of shows, so used to the 8,200 people. That's right, so some of the athletes will really rise to the occasion, they'll use that energy and enthusiasm from the spectators to their advantage. Five judges led by Claudio Domiro, he's on the left-hand side. The Italian head judge gives her a seven and a half. She'll keep three eights, 76.80 for her fourth and final round. So a grand total when you add all four together, 246.60. So Huber of the United States leads the way. Greg Luganis, the sports director on the Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series, the legend, greatest diver of all time, Olympic gold medal winner, and an all-around great guy making sure things are safe and sound. I mean, they put that platform, I mean, they had to mount that thing, Joey, on the side of the Uri stone right there, the famous cliff that they're diving off of. Quite a process to install the platforms here. As you said, on the Uri stone cliff, 21 meters is the height of the platform. First Ukrainian diver. Yeah. And the Vish Women's Rebel Cliff Diving World Series, Antonina Shivanova. Great shot here in the Swiss Alps and the beautiful Lake Lucerne. Great visuals for the athletes, making it a little bit nervous for some of them, Joey, as we mentioned, 8,200 people floating around down there and sitting on the sidelines. Interesting bleachers we have here at Red Bull Cliff Diving. Wolf polishing the dive off at the end for Antonina Vashivanova from Ukraine. Round of applause from the fellow female athletes. Very great show of camaraderie amongst all the divers here. Looking at the takeoff, very cut down. It needed or required a lot more power on takeoff to impress the judges. The last part of the dive, a job well done. Just watch this, it really should go up and over a lot more so the Body's leaning a long way forward, cutting its way down. So for example, if she wanted to add another somersault, she would require a lot more vertical jump, a more explosive takeoff. Once again, the trampolining maneuver to land feet first. And Joey, she's only 20 years old and the only Ukraine diver. How do you get involved in cliff diving at 20 years old? Then we have 76.50, she's a wild card. And the better you perform, you may get the chance to get more tour stops later on in the season. Beautiful shot of the Swiss Alps. We're a one hour drive south of Zurich in the heart of Switzerland. Remember to check us out on social media. Follow us at Red Bull Cliff Diving on Instagram. Take a look at all the great photos and videos posted over the past several days as Eriana Jimenez, the current 2018 points leader, steps up. Now, she hasn't had the best dive so far, Joey. Can she keep it rolling and remain on top of that leaderboard when you have Rihanna Niflin diving pretty sharp right now? That's right. She had two good required dive rounds, faulted in the second optional dive. And now she has a reverse triple somersault in the tuck position facing forwards, but spinning back towards the platform. Oof, showing off years and years of experience. With this particular dive, you need great aerial awareness. You need to spot and see every somersault as you pass by. Particularly scary dives, these ones. Counting there, two, and then kicking out for the dive. Very great line in the air. You can see she's rounded the shoulders and scooped through on the entry. So it's a bit 
unfortunate because the takeoff, look at the elevation. Yes, it's powerful. That's the ball shape that's called tuck position. Seeing the water for the second time. And it's these kind of dives when you're learning how to dive that tend to really scare the divers. When you're rotating forwards, it's much easier to sense that gravitational pull towards Earth. This one, you need to see the water every single time. Jimenez earned the 2017 Best Mexican Athlete of the Year Award, a huge honor presented by the President of Mexico. So the Mexican star, Adriana Jimenez, and the current series leader, 285.75. That'll be good enough for the lead at the moment. Probably needed some higher scores if you want to get up on the podium with who's to come in Rihanna Niflin, Lisanne Richard, Jessica McCauley, as you see down below. So Jimenez, 285.75, puts her in the lead right now in the women's fourth and final round. Rihanna Niflin, two-time Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series champ. She will dive last, preparing in the athlete lounge area. Jana Nestriava from Belarus, the drummer, the skateboarder, but most importantly, the fine cliff diver. Once again, this is the fourth and final round for the women. It's all about maxing out your degree of difficulty. Yeah, Front three somersaults it, right? with one and a half. You've got to go for it, yeah. but you've got to get the execution as well. Speaking of that, what does she need from the judges to take the lead? She must score greater than sevens on this particular dive. She needs a lot of power on takeoff. She's got to use maximum force. The bell signifying the judges are ready. Hits Oof. it. Job well done. Looking pretty solid for Jana Nestriava. But the judges sit side onto the platform. They're the only ones who can really see the dive incomplete. So from the side angle, you can see all of those little mistakes where they're drawing into the pike. Here's the twist. Look at the pike. The pike's very open. So the judges will see that and say, look, that's not close enough. I need to take a few points off of that. So you may see some dives that have an incredible entry. And you think, wow, why aren't they scoring nines or, or tens on that dive? And that is the judges need to look at all parts fairly and equally. So very open in the pike position there. Well, the men competed here back in 2009 and 10. It's been eight years since their return. Only a small handful of guys even competed in this competition. Then the women, this is the first time they've ever been to Sisakon and dove off the Uri Stone cliff face. Nestirava moves into the lead over Jimenez. 292.30 is the grand total when you add all four scores from today, all four dives together. Look at that. Just the just the walk and the end, I mean just the walk to the platform is pretty crazy. In my it, opinion, I would isn't it? It's like this gangway, <laughs> this catwalk, you know, perch right on the side of the cliff face. <laughs> Uh, that is in there all the time. That was installed for this event. Nestirava, Jimenez, Vishavanova, one, two, and three. Macaulay, Richard, and Iflin yet to drop. The women's platform, 21 meters, nearly 70 feet off of the water. And Greg Luganis, he's sitting 90 feet, 27 meters off the water. Looking, in, uh, looking on, the sport director making sure everything's safe. Now, Jessica McCauley, talk about her, Joey. I mean, having a great season as a wild card diver. Really started Let's making everybody nervous at the first stop in Texas when she hit it there yeah. and almost won. Yeah, she almost won. I mean, literally just by a few, you know, decimal points. And as a matter of fact, with this very dive, with a back triple somersault in the pike position, getting ramped up with the crowd, she holds the record for the highest scoring dive, 108 points. I think this event holds the record for the most things floating in the water at the exact same time. I mean, you have rubber duckies down there. We have flamingos. I've seen unicorns, stand-up paddle boards. The Timex dive clock counting down, and the bell signifying the judges are ready. Here we go. Jessica McCauley, the wild card diver. Wow, she's so graceful in the air. Those beautiful long lines makes the dive look so cool. Now when we talk about wild card divers, Joey, that means that there's just a handful of girls that are 
going on the full tour. That's and right. The wild card divers like Macaulay have to work their way up in just a small amount of events through the season. Six permanent series divers, four wild cards per tour stop. And if you dive well, you get more tour stops. Look Think at she this. has a shot? <laughs> yes, I do. Look, yes, I do. Coming out nice and early for the dive. And there's the most relieving moment when you finally see the water. That's the biggest fear of losing your orientation in the air. So that moment when you kick out, look back, you see the water, there's a moment of relief. But then there's another job to do to adjust for the landing. Slight over-rotation for Jessica McCauley. She represents the UK but resides in Texas, United States. McCauley. Comes in with 207 as a grand total, so did she not do the dive expected there? We'll get you up to speed on that as we get ready for Lisanne Richard. There we go. That looks a little bit better. 90 points on that particular dive. Add all four together. McCauley, 297, and moves into first with two to go. So guaranteed a podium is wild card diver Jessica McCauley. She's been on the podium quite a bit this season, Joey. Very strong, very consistent. So McCauley, Nestiraba, Jimenez, the top three and have podium positions at the moment, but a very strong Richard and two-time World Series champion Ifland yet to drop into Lake Lucerne off the 21-meter, 70-foot platform. Always smiling, always having a great time. Canadian and mother of three, Lisanne Richard. Time to ramp things up. Getting down to the last two divers right now. What's she throwing down into the water? She's got a chamois. So the chamois are used to dry the legs after the dive. So when you're rotating, you need to grab onto your legs you need to make sure that you don't slip out of the dive. That is the reason why they have the chamois. It comes a bit like their security blanket as well. Sure. Front three somersaults in the pike position with one and a half twists. The same dive as Jana Nestriava from Belarus. But how will she perform this dive? Judges are ready for a shot at the podium. Running takeoff. Must score sevens to take the lead. She can do that. It's within her grasp. Oh! That's how you do it. And with that dive, surely she should take the lead. Gracious round of applause from the fellow athletes. A-OK -okay sign for the scuba divers that are in the water to make sure the athletes are safe. Twist at the beginning, pike in the middle. Once again, the acceleration curve, 71 kilometers per hour. And you have to land feet first for these particular dives that centrifugal force, the legs wanting to pull apart slightly there. She really needs to draw the pike position in tighter to maximize the scores. And she was out injured last year in 2017 with a neck injury. So step by step, every single competition she's improving. And if you haven't done these high dives for a long time, there's a lot of fear, a lot of anxiety. You get a bit of rusty, you get a bit rusty. You just got to shake it off step by step, stay patient and you'll start to dive well. And that is showing right here today. Centrifugal force, Joey says, which is defined as drawing and rotating body away from the center of rotation caused by the inertia of the body. Lisanne Richard, number one, 313.45 when you add all four together. Some serious consistency by the Canadian, mother of three. She's on the podium. And one person will have the fate in whether it will be gold or silver. One more to go. Rihanna Nifflin, the two-time Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series champion. We'll see if she can get back on top of the podium, back to back. Two stops in a row. Here we have Rihanna Nifflin. She's got the highest degree of difficulty in this round. Back three somersaults with two twists. Brand new dive. She walked away from this dive a few times in training. She was definitely nervous about it, but she knows how to turn the heat up in the competition. Look at that massive degree of difficulty, 4.3. 
Former <laughs> trampolinist, avid surfer. Aldo misses that, she told me, because she's so busy on the diving tour. Final diver, Rhiannon Ifland. For Rhiannon to win greater than six and a halves, needs to focus on the takeoff. 8,200 spectators down below. Okay, a bit of a hit and a miss on the entry. Here we go, we have some very, very anxious moments to see what the judges think. Huge degree of difficulty, but that comes with high risk, it makes it harder to nail the dive. Let's look at the end, and you can see that she really came up quite short of vertical. That's unlike her, Joey. She needs an 81.35 on this dive. So, in your opinion, what do you think? Here we go. I get, mean, get me I, out ahead of the judges, listen, buddy. I just think she really struggled on the takeoff. She just didn't have a lot of power. You can see she's holding on to the pike as long as she can. And at the end of the dive, she just simply doesn't have enough room to finish it. So she's landed short. She hasn't found the vertical line. This is not what she needed, Trace Worthington. This is unexpected, but it is a new dive. A lot of water being displaced. She lands short. The judges come up a bit short. 75.25 on that last dive, 307.35. Rhiannon Iflin second to Lisanne Richard, the mother of three from Canada, will win. Sissicon, stop number four. Wow, what a moment for her. Coming back after that neck injury, I was with her when she was actually injured and it was really a tough recovery process. You have no idea the length she's gone for the mental and physical preparation to get back on the platform. Lisanne Richard seals the deal and locks up the win in Sissicon, Switzerland, stop number four. Rihanna Nifflin, two-time Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series champ, grabs the silver. Jessica McCauley, consistency, wow, look at that. Third place and another podium finish for the wild card diver. Leader, Ariana Jimenez in fifth, still solid in the points. What an unbelievable women's competition. And here is the winning dive, Joey. Lassane Rashad choosing the running takeoff to leap towards the end of the platform, helping her to generate more height, more power. And this is where you start to really feel those G-forces as well. Up to nine to 10 G-forces in the air. Particularly at this point, your arms are holding on tight, trying not to slip out. And with those Years of circus experience and trampoline experience. She tends to find the right line, slicing through the water like a knife, and to take the win here in Sisicon, the first time the women have been at this very location. The emotion is showing on her face. And really, when you have all of that hard work, a whole year off high diving, and to come to this point and to finally win, this is fantastic. She was second place overall in the 2016 season, so she's of a high caliber and obviously very, very happy. So Rihanna Nifflin now goes to the top of the overall series points. Ariana Jimenez drops to second, is still a tight race, but Lisanne Richard moves up to third place overall in the series standings 2018. Eight thousand two hundred spectators on hand. Stop number four of the Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series from the small village of Sisakon, Switzerland. Diving off the Uri Stone Cliff Face. And everything buoyant possible down there, Joey. Boats and homemade rafts. You have stand-up paddle boards. So jealous. I mean, look at that. <laughs> yeah, like there's, there's unicorns and flamingos and it's great, isn't it? Look at it. <laughs> Wow. It is an unbelievable setting, and it's the first time that this competition, the Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series, has returned when the men competed here in 29, or 2009 and 2010. It's the first time the women have competed at this venue. And Lisanne Richard of Canada will be the first female to win. Show us that you're watching. Hashtag Red Bull 
cliff diving. Show us your pictures, show us your videos. All you guys out there having a good time. If you're listening, send in your favorite picks. Yep. Show us something I just funny. Did. I just want to see something funny. I just, That's what I want to see. I just sent one in from the booth, though. Yeah. The Uri Stone right there, that cliff face, legendary. It's quite a process to set up the platforms at this particular location. All right, 8,200 spectators on hand to watch the world's best cliff divers stop number four of the Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series from the small village of Sisikon, Switzerland, a population of 382 people. And the legendary Orlando Duque will not be competing today because of an injury he sustained at the last stop in Portugal. There he is, hanging out, just supporting all of the athletes and trying to get back into his game and his focus. Such a great guy, good to have around. He's down there hanging out in the hot spot. Really encouraging and coaching, and you mentioned it earlier. If Orlando Duque speaks up, you want to listen to him. He does. Mentally, very strong, very focused. Ben to watch, Joey. Who should we be checking out? After three rounds of diving, this is Gary Hunt. Well, we should be checking out this man, the six times Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series winner. Getting back on track, he really suffered a very challenging mental block with twisting dives. He couldn't differentiate between single twists and double twists. Jonathan Perez with his round two dive, the intermediate dive, one and a half twisting triple somersault, and the entry we would expect from the Rip Master from Mexico. And then Steve round LeBou. three, Steve Labou coming up. He was trying to make it, or is trying to make it, a hat trick to win three competitions in a row. But unfortunately, with this dive, he has faulted. He may have missed his chance. The only other two divers to have a hat trick, three competitions in a row to win Orlando Duque and Gary Hunt. But still, he's a fine cliff diver and a fine crowd here today. Fine crowd it is in Lake Lucerne in the Swiss Alps. The water is warm. 21 degrees Celsius, 70 degrees Fahrenheit. Start list for men's fourth and final round. Miguel Garcia will kick things off. It's reverse order, so the lowest score after three rounds of diving will go first. Steven Lobu going for the hat trick number six. Matthias Appenzeller, the local favorite. He's diving well. We'll see what he can pull together as he'll go off the platform in the number, number eighth position. Dorose Paredes and Gary Hunt, the last three to dive and hunt. Quotes. The old Gary Hunt is back, and the twist is back. And when he says that, Joey, very dangerous for all the other competitors. When he was down and not jump diving well, that's when you strike, right? <laughs> exactly. Some of the divers took advantage of that situation. And Gary's still back in the ranks in the overall series points at the moment. So he's ranked eighth overall. So he's got a lot of catching up to do. So it's about time the twist is back. Miguel Garcia from Colombia on the platform. The diving coach making his second appearance in 2018. He's a wild card diver. Remember, wild card divers go to a handful of events. Not all, they're not invited to all, but if they do well, they will be the next season. Here he goes. Fourth and final dive. Miguel Garcia. Big fault for Miguel Garcia with this particular dive. That is a heavy impact. Indeed. So let's talk about the water spray. You talk about traditional diving that everyone sees in the Olympics. So dive. Springboard and, you know, I mean, is it the same? Do the judges dock you for that? Basically, the sport of cliff diving works the same as conventional diving. You still need to judge it based upon aesthetics. You get an increased degree of difficulty for the more somersaults and twists you perform. So this particular dive is harder than a front takeoff. So different directions will have more degree of difficulty. So this is spinning in towards the platform and it is harder to generate that rotation. You can see that he's coming around for the entry point. Watch the legs here, watch how they bend. That's a break of position. He needed to pick up speed to make sure he landed in the water safely. Right. And he took a hard hit on this dive, Trace Worthington. That's a lot of impact. That's you don't want to sacrifice form and stay straight and come in short. It's an unfortunate result for Miguel Garcia, the wild card. As you said, you need to 
dive well to get more spots. For those new to cliff diving, if you come in short or go by, I mean, do many divers do that and get hurt? They do. They do. It all depends. I mean, sometimes you can be vertical, have a good entry, and you can be injured. You can pull a groin or a knee. Fellow Colombian, Orlando Duque, giving Garcia some advice. As we look at a beautiful day here, surrounded by the Swiss Alps, Lake Lucerne, Alain Cole, next to dive. Fourth and final rounds, the 35-year-old. What a small handful of guys, Joey, who competed here in Sisicon eight and nine years ago. And he's replacing the injured David Colturi for this stop. Colturi, unfortunately, sustained an injury here in Sisicon just a few days ago. He's on hand hanging out a little bit, but unfortunately, we won't see David Colturi. We'll see if Alan Cole can fill those shoes. Very tough. See Alan Cole going through those visualization moments. The Timex dive clock on the platform will count down when the bell rings. The bell signifies the start of the dive. Front three somersaults, two and a half twists for Alan Cole. Splashing the water to help see the surface. Well, this is the optional dive round, the fourth and final dive for this competition. So you've got to push the limits. You have to think to yourself, okay, what dive am I capable of doing? But also, I need to execute the dive as best as possible. They're not judging the degree of difficulty, Trace. They're just looking, is the dive elegant? Is it graceful in the air? And he's lacking the finishing touches with this particular dive. A little rough on the legs there, should be a bit straighter. Comes from a gymnastic background, so feeling his way in the twist. Is he a former gymnast? I mean, those new to this sport, you wanted to get into it. I mean, you could be a gymnast, a trampolinist, a diver. I mean, what does it take? Look, I think we've had some, uh, some great former gymnasts. They tend to lack a little bit of the form. And you have conventional divers, and you also have people like Rihanna Nifland, who comes from a very strong trampolining background and a strong diving background, and that makes her a real powerhouse. Right. And putting those two sports together really makes you the complete cliff diver. And you have to be a little bit fearless, I would imagine, in the mm -hmm. sport of cliff diving. Yeah. Nerves of steel. Five judges, the high and the lower tossed out. The remaining three multiplied by the degree of difficulty, 66-65. So Cole will come in for a grand total after you add all four dives together of 274. There is Gary Hunt getting prepared. He will dive last, number 14. Chilling out, meditating, a little physical therapy. And just watching cliff diving from Lake Lucerne on a floaty device is therapy. And it's a whole nother perspective when you're watching the competition live right down at the water level hearing the impact, feeling the energy of the competition. Slavik Kolesnikov of Ukraine, wild card diver, 36 years old. So the oldest of the men, Blake Aldrich is also 36, but just turned that yesterday. So Slavik has just a few months on Aldrich, who we'll see shortly. This is his second appearance on the Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series. He replaces Orlando Duque in this competition, Joey. Here we go. Whoa. Nice. <laughs> the wild card, Slavik Kolesnikov from Ukraine. He was in a in a training camp at Area 47 in, in Austria. I was there watching the divers. And it was great to see some new talent coming up the ranks. And the Ukrainian and the Russian divers have a very particular style. Particularly the Ukrainian divers, always very flexible. Look at how the legs are pulled right against the body, just like a pocket knife. That's what you want to do. Fold like a pocket knife, increase your rotation like speed. Like a Swiss Army knife? Yeah, like a Swiss Army they knife. They make some nice, nice ones here. That's right, manufactured, not far from here, as a matter of fact. Look at the flexibility required using that gravitational pull, that light and heavy feeling. It's just incredible, those 11 G-forces of impact that will impose upon the body it will feel like it's 600 kilograms. So even if you have a good landing, as I said before, it can tear you apart underneath the water. This sport is only for 
the brave Trace Worthington. And there's Duque, who he's, Belesnikov is replacing for this competition. And moving to the lead with 302.85. Tough shoes to fill there, Orlando Duque. You want to do that, you got to grow your hair out and sign a bunch of autographs. <laughs> <laughs> How do I become and, famous? And, and, and dive, unbelievably. Yeah. And that is the way to the platform. Pretty crazy. That, all of this stuff has been installed prior to the event. That was just a big story in itself, just to watch that go down. Mikhail Navratil, he had a poor third round dive, Joey, which puts him in this position running number four at the moment. He needs a good dive to pull back in there. Right now, he is sitting number two in the overall points, but one of the best guys you will see on this series. Nice guy, walk by him, down the street, gives you a big old hug. Okay. He, just plenty loves, of energy, he just that's loves for sure. the sport. Plenty of energy. Mikhail Supratil Navratil from the Czech Republic. He always talks about that he needs to feel the energy from the crowd. Look at him, yeah. clapping and cheering. He needs that before he dies. Is he Every doing, is he doing his arm stand here? Now, what have we got with Mikhail Navratil? No. We have a forward three somersaults with two and a half twists. The position will be in the pike, so he'll take off forwards, go into that pike position where the legs are straight, and then twist in the middle. Wonderful atmosphere here in Sissicon, Switzerland. This is, this is his 66th career start. Very experienced athlete. Once again, visualizing the dive. The psychologists always advise the divers to visually and physically block the dive through before the execution. The judges are ready, and so are the 8,200 spectators and fans below. Mikhail Navratil, fourth and final dive. There we go, oh. much better. Redeemed himself after his third round dive today. That's what you gotta do. Okay, you have a poor dive. It's very difficult to do that. You can really get angry at yourself after a bad dive. Sure. So allow yourself to get angry, get over it, shake it off and say, okay, now I've got another dive because you never know what the other divers are gonna do. They may falter too. So you can still stay in the rank. So you should never ever give up the fight. Is there grip tape on the end of that? Mm -hmm. <laughs> there is grip tape on the end of it. So the divers tend to actually curl their toes over the front of the platform. So they're trying to rotate forwards on this particular dive. So they have to grip with their toes and pull. So they'll actually fold the grip tape over the edge to make sure they get grip and rotation. So much power and force required to do these dives. Mental and prowess. It, and, you, and you said it earlier, feet first, because from these heights, that's right. No dice on going head first. Yes. You need those big muscle groups, the legs, to make sure you can handle the force from the water. Five judges. Claudio De Miro of Italy is the head judge. He's on the left-hand side. He gives an eight and a half on this one. The high and the low tossed out. The remaining three multiplied by the DD. 103 for his fourth round. Not bad. He made up a little bit there, Joey. 329.15. So... Navratil of the Czech Republic now in the lead. He goes, he dives number four of 14. Gary Hunt runs last because he has the highest score after three rounds. Look at that, one hour drive from Zurich, a beautiful lake, high snow-capped jagged mountains in the background. And here he is, the salsa dancer, Sergi Al Guzman. And Joe, he's going to throw his shoes and a chamois down. Well, most just, of the divers have like a pair of thongs. Shouldn't you just leave that stuff down there? <laughs> exactly. But no, but the point is you've got to get out of the water, climb back up the cliff. It's rocky. Oh. You've got to go through a path, scale, a little gangway. <laughs> it's like a little boy coming in to, to put stuff in his locker. I mean, look, this is like the eighth or ninth story of a high rise. So take a peek over the balcony, look down. And why don't they wear shoes? Well, this is a good question. If you do have shoes on, it increases the surface area of your feet, and actually you run the risk of pulling your groin like that. So it's better to have no shoes on. Also, it makes it a lot heavier when you're rotating in the dive. So best not to have anything at the extremities. Four somersaults on this one. This was cool. Sergio Guzman had a very, very bad landing on this dive last year and overcome his mental fear of the dive at the last tour stop in Chile. But nonetheless, 
the memory of this dive and the bad landing does plague him. I promise you, he is nervous. He must concentrate. The 27-year-old salsa dancer ready to dive. Look at the emotion, slapping the water. <laughs> and like I was saying, like, there's so much tension built up before the dive. He's well aware of what can go wrong because it's happened to him personally. And, and he's dives. fired up, man. He's relieved. Look at the head here. One, two, three, holding on and kicking out. Now, the point about this dive is that on takeoff, watching the second replay, he's pushed a long way out from the platform what does that do? It slows the dive down, so he really has to hold on to maintain rotation. Feeling his way in the air. Watch this. He'll hold on and he'll try and kick up more or less vertical because he knows he's in trouble. He's moving a long way from the platform. The judges will take off some points for being too far away, but in terms of aerial awareness, he did a good job to understand the mistake on the platform. And that is the point. No matter the takeoff, you're always making adjustments in the air slowing the dive down, speeding the dive up. The job is never done until you touch the water. And he is psyched. Sergio Guzman, wild card diver. Was a permanent diver, had a poor season in 2017, put him back in the wild card category. And we'll see if dives like this can pull him back into being a permanent invited diver for the 2019 season. Guzman on that dive, 108. All four dives are added together for the total score. In this case, 334.85. Sergio Guzman of Mexico pulls into the number one spot. As 8,200 fans look on and get ready for our next diver, he is the current series leader and going for the hat trick. The winner of the last two stops is Steven Lobu getting prepared. And look at that, checking out all the spectators down below. Going for the hat trick, Steven Lebu. Can he pull it off? Can he do it? It's going to be tough right now with the score he's at. That's right, but he's got massive degree of difficulty. He was the first person to perform this dive. This is crazy. A running takeoff, or maybe he's doing it standing, I'm not sure, but it's a front five somersaults in the pike position. You, the viewer, see if you can count the somersaults as they go by. They call him the spin master, and there's a reason. I mean, if you get dizzy at these heights and one mistake, Joey, from 27 meters, 90 feet off the water, it's not good news if you land wrong. Now, Steven is marking out the run up here. So he'll hop, skip and a jump. And he'll take that mark and then he'll run forward to make sure he lands exactly on the end of the platform. That's why he marks it out. Steve Labou. Wow, this guy is a cat. Supreme aerial awareness. <laughs> clap at the feet, clap from the scuba divers. And the scuba divers are always down there to make sure everybody is safe and to splash the water sur surface. Throwing the arms forward. Two, three, four coming out right at the end. And he knew it was a little bit quick at the end of the dive. My analysis, he was a tiny bit slow at the beginning of the dive in terms of the takeoff. And I think he felt this. He holds on two, three, filling those G-forces, 11 G-forces. He knows he's a tad slow, so he waits until he's upside down. Then he has to stretch it out. So maybe he needed to come out a little bit earlier, but easier said than done. I mean, these split-second judgments so hard to make traveling at these kind of speeds and at that velocity in terms of rotation. Supreme athletes, the best, 
cliff divers in the world. We are watching here today at the fourth and final round of the Rebel Cliff Diving World Series in Sisikon. Steven Lobu sits number one on the World, Cup, uh, the world Series points. Coming into stop number four. 112 on that dive. 349-30 for Steve Labou of the United States. And that's good enough for the lead. That is the good news. The bad news, many divers yet to come, including Alessandro De Rose, Jonathan Paredes, and Gary Hunt to cap off the fourth and final round. Chris Colanis is next. He is such a strong diver. Jonathan Paredes warming up in the hot tub. Even though it is warm outside, these guys got to keep it loose. In the athlete lounge, speaking of lounging, everything floating down below possible. The most interesting set of bleachers in sports here at the Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series. Best stadium in the world. All right, Chris Colanis has his own record label. Fan of graffiti art. What's he got in store, Joey, for this fourth and final dive? In with four somersaults in the pike position, he needs a lot of strength and a lot of technique and power to make sure he can, com can complete this dive. Winner of the series opener in Texas in 2018. He's got the goods, that's for sure. Chris Galanis making a few errors on the dive. But they're risking all right now. They're pushing the limits. So each diver has their own particular favorite maneuvers they like to do. So Chris is good at inward taking, inward dives, or inward rotating skills. But what I saw was the takeoff was not fast enough, not powerful enough. At this point, he's just a little bit too slow. Incredible flexibility you have to work on everything. Strength, flexibility, your mental game, acrobatics, aerial awareness. There are hours and hours and hours of training that go in to this sport to handle the impact and handle the maneuvers required to be an elite cliff diver. Chris Kalanis, his fourth and final dive, 77.55. 318 will be the total for Kalanis, fourth place off of the podium. So Lobu holding down the top spot with his 349.30. Guzman of Mexico in second. Navratil, Supratil in third. And listen up, Matias Appenzeller. Listen to the crowd, the local. <laughs> Jonathan knows what it's like to dive in his home country. It's pretty special. Wonderful feeling. You want to do your country proud. A clap to ramp up the atmosphere before the dive. Now this is de his debut on the Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series, and it's in front of his home country and 8,200 of them. And rumor has it he works out. Built like four, strong boy. There's a small rumor <laughs> that he works out. <laughs> Gotta love it. Law student from the University of Zurich and cliff diver. Great story, fan of Alessandro De Rose. And didn't he come here and go to a camp or a clinic by Orlando Duque a long right. time ago? He was 14 years of age in 2009, and Orlando Duque was running this cliff diving training camp to, to teach the youth how to dive, and he was there. So I think at that point, he, Orlando Duque planted the seed in Matias Appenzella's mind to be a cliff so diver. So inspired by Duque to dive, and inspired by De Rose to get some tattoos. <laughs> yes, I <we> got that. <laughs> I'm sure they get along just nicely, huh? <laughs> All right, here we go. Matthias Appenzeller, wildcard diver local. In with three somersaults in the pike position for the half twist. Standing backwards, spinning in towards the platform.
crowd there loves it. <laughs> <laughs> they just love it, don't they? They are being treated to one of the greatest spectacles on earth. Well, with 8,200 people coming out to spectate today, Joey, and this guy in the event, I have a feeling we'll be back here next year. I hope so. I really do hope that we do come back to SissyCon. Little bit of a mistake on the entry, but the point is, it's his first competition. You've got to gain a lot of valuable experience. So he's dove from lower heights in the past, from 20 and 25 meters. And to make it that extra two meters up to 27 is not so easy. But he did man manage to make it to area 47 to train from the 27 meter platform there to make sure he was fit and ready for the competition. So the round three dive that he had was fantastic. And I think with more experience, more training, he will certainly improve. Absolutely. Steve Lobu still holds down the top score with 349.30. So the judges weighing in on the local hero. Oppenzeller, 62 points on that particular dive, pretty low. So when you add that with the rest of the dives from earlier, Oppenzeller, fifth, 303. Six divers to go, Steve Lobu leads the way with 349 points. That is the score to beat. Guzman still holds down the second place position and Navratil third. Oppenzeller, who you just saw, moves into fifth position. I tell you what though, a good top 10 finish in his debut is pretty solid. All right, Victor Maslowski, the wild card diver, 27 years old. He replaces Orlando Duque. You know, he doesn't replace Orlando Duque. He's just one of the wild card divers, right? Uh, replacing David Kulturi, as a Kultur. matter of fact. So there were two series divers injured. Right. The wild card divers were ready to replace them. That's a great opportunity for Victor Maslowski from Belarus, the computer programmer and come cliff diver. Yeah. Now that is what I call an extreme That's contrast. That's cool. Hey, where are you going this weekend? From his office mates. I'm going to go jump off a cliff. Okay, not the idea result, not what Viktor Mislowski was looking for. So he knows he hasn't done it quite right, but he's facing his fears. And all of these athletes have to face their own demons. So this is a back triple triple. So that is three somersaults with three twists. One of the first people in the world to perform this dive. Artem Sulchenko. Watch how the arms all wrap across the body. There's the twist. The toes are slightly pulling apart. Once again, feeling those centrifugal forces. Making those adjustments at 85 kilometers per hour. These are split second judgments. Victor Maslowski, the wild card. You can see his hand bandaged with a few injuries. It's all, about, to the sport. it's all about getting that experience, as you've mentioned many times before, Joey. Maslowski in eighth after you add all four scores together from this competition. 293.75. Steve Lobu from the United States still in the lead. Maslowski, he dove number nine. Five to go. Andy Jones of the United States, the multi-talented athlete. Guy's a skier, he's a stuntman, a baseball player, cliff diver, 33 years old, Cirque du Soleil performer back in the day. Currently ranked number seven in the overall points, coming into stop number four. He has a great, Joey, you've told me before, just really elegant twisting position. A different style, it comes from that kind of gymnastic background. So in twisting dives, the athletes will sometimes choose to put one arm above the head and one arm across the torso, but he'll put both arms bent and against the torso. So every diver has their own style, their own way of performing dives, and that is the, the nice thing about the sport. You can put your own touch to the dives.
Andy <laughs> Jones putting some pressure on the divers to come. Teammate Steve Laboo. Big cheer for him. <laughs> <laughs> They're good pals for sure. A little sure. excited, huh? a little bit pals. excited. <laughs> Fantastic. It's great. All of the American divers, as a matter of fact, all of the athletes sure. always cheer each other on. Yeah, but those guys sit next to each other on the plane every trip, so every they're trip. pretty close. Oh, yes. And Andy Jones, as you were saying, worked in the Osho in Las Vegas. She has a lot of experience on the Russian swing, so they have this swing that's on the ground that pushes the divers up so they can perform similar dives to the high dive. So they actually somersault and twist on the way up and on the way down, but they can do the same kind of maneuvers and you can do that over and over to gain that confidence. And in the sport of cliff diving, you can't do that many repetitions. You've only got about four dives to five dives in a training session, not like a normal or conventional diving session. And that's related to the strong impact. The body just can't handle that many dives. After these competitions, in the morning, trust me, you wake up sore every single time, no matter the landing. A bunch of eights right there, and eight and a half by Jeff Arbin. The Australian judge will toss that one out and the other low score. So 369.25 for Andy Jones of the United States. That means Steve Labou will not snag that hat trick he was after. He drops into second. So fellow teammate and very good friend Andy Jones blocks Labou from getting the hat trick here in Sisicon. And here's Blake Aldridge. He just turned 36 years old yesterday. Happy birthday, Blake. Became a father to his baby girl, Alila, just after the first stop in Texas back in June. And if you follow this guy on social media, he hangs out with the famous DJ, Steve Aoki. I mean, I pull it up just to watch. It's pretty cool. He's always backstage. Yes, backstage with crowds just like this. He goes cliff diving with them all. He takes Steve cliff diving. competition is heating up only three more divers to come after Blake Aldridge made the podium at the first tour stop in Texas Blake Aldridge currently in sixth position in the series right now so he wants to perform better than he did at the last tour stop in Portugal and he's a 2008 Olympian so he has great twisting technique the coaches provided him with excellent technical skills. A very fast twister. And so in the sport of diving, some of the athletes will have better fast twitch muscles than others, and that means they can be slightly more explosive. So he's very explosive in terms of the twisting dives. Pretty good. A few deductions on the entry. 103.50 for Blake Aldridge. We'll see where that puts him after you add the other dives in. 363.80. So Aldridge slips into second, bumps Steve Lobu to third, and Andy Jones of the United States remains the leader with three to drop here at the fourth stop of the Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series in Sisicon, Switzerland. So Jones, Aldridge, Lobu hold down the podium right now. Torose, Jonathan Perez, and Gary Hunt. Stepping up to dive. The Rose wants to hear the noise from the crowd. Sits in a great position, 26 years old. Currently ranked number nine on the overall points. The Rocker. Grew up in Southern Italy. Winner of the Polignano Amare World Series stop last season. What's he got going, Joey? Okay. Alessandro De Rose must score eight to take the lead. The pressure is on right now. He wants to get on the podium. Didn't have a great result in Portugal. He's got to make up for lost ground for three somersaults with two and a half twists. Come on, Alessandro. The competition is alive. Well, that's it. It's hard to see from that angle. The judges are sitting side on. It looked pretty good. Very energetic. 
on the platform. Joey, he needs 98.40 to take the lead over Jones. Great takeoff. The twist looks very, very clean. And you can see there, he's just rounded on the water. He must be straight as an arrow to make sure you can slice through the water. So the athletes will try to make sure their feet are flat on entry to make sure there's a hole for the body to pass through. Coming out at the double twist mark. The trampoline maneuver coming into play. Landing feet first, no chance to dive head first. Here in Sissicon from 27 meters, 85 kilometers per hour. Your body will feel like it's 600 kilograms. It's around about 11 G-forces. Not enough to take the lead for Alessandro De Rose. Sevens across the board, one of them being a seven and a half. We'll get rid of that. Add three of them together, multiply by the degree of difficulty. 90.30, the Italian Alessandro De Rose in third, which means Andy Jones remains the leader with two to drop. Getting interesting, Joey, for this particular stop. Jones, number one, Aldridge De Rose. That's what the podium looks so far. Paredes and Hunt yet to dive. Two guys that are very familiar and have tasted that King Ka Keeley trophy at the end of the season. And the pressure is on as Jonathan Paredes gets ready for his fourth and final dive. Will he get his first win of this season? He's got a great shot. But Gary Hunt is back on fire. 8,200 people looking on to Jonathan Paredes, the 2017 Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series champion. Here we have it. Running takeoff front four somersaults with one and a half twists. If he scores sevens from the judges, he can take the lead. And that is within his grasp. Trace Worthington. Andy Jones nervously awaiting down below to see where he will sit on the podium. He's on it and guaranteed a spot. It just depends where he will be, on top, the middle, or bottom. into Lake Lucerne. The rip master time and time again has shown us how to do it. Now, there are 99 tens in the history of the sport. 10 years in the series. You think he's a shot at one of them right now? I need to see it from the side angle. But this is a Whoa. superb dive. Really, at least nines, at least nines. Let's look at the takeoff. Pretty really good. It's not too far away from the platform. Looking at the water, twisting. Feet very close to the platform there. Very small split of the feet. Maybe the judges will catch that, but everything is moving so fast in real time. This competition is absolutely on fire, Trace Worthington. Will we see a 10? Fred to cap it off to 100. He knows who's coming up, and he knows he's back, and that is Gary Hunt. So Paredes did the right thing, throwing it down, getting some high points potentially by the judges. And that's what you do. You put pressure on the opponent to come. There you go. You say to yourself in your mind, I've got to nail it. Whoa! Oh! Just shy of a 10. Just shy. They almost thought they were going to give it. Nine and a half across the board. 133.95. A gigantic score for the 2017 World Series champion. Well deserved. Paredes moves into the lead. The only one to get over 400 points so far at 407.05. The pressure is absolutely building for Gary Hunt. This is just like a crescendo, isn't it? Building perfectly right to the very end. We've got one more diver to come. Gary Hunt, the six times Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series winner. So ahead of Jones by 38 points, Jonathan Paredes. Jones with the silver at the moment. Aldridge has a podium spot, and we'll see if it holds. It's going to be tough here as Gary Hunt gets ready to launch into the small village of Sisicon into Lake Lucerne for the fourth and final dive. 
highest DD. And, uh, you know, he said, the old Gary Hunt's coming back, guys. He is back and twisting better than ever. We'll see if that's the case on this final dive. What do you think, Joey? This is his signature dive, the triple quad, back three somersaults with four twists. Huge degree of difficulty. 30 career wins. Okay, the twist is back, but the entry was not ideal. Was not ideal for Gary Hunt in this situation right now. He's dealt with a lot of mental blocks with the twisting dives. Can't differentiate between single twist and double twist, but he can do three and a half twists at this moment. Look at this, three and a half out at this moment into the pike position. Just miscalculated the entry. I think he could have had it, but easier said than done. Great reach. Very, very nervous moment. It's all about what the judges think of the dive. Has he done enough to win the competition here? And the question is, does the high degree of difficulty overcome and help out that little bit of splash and impact that you pointed out, Joey Zuber. And that is the game that you have to play. You have to balance it between the high DD and execution. You go for the dive, you go for the big dives, and you just hope you get it down. Such a tense moment. You got some sevens in the seven and a half. That looks good, Joey. For a total score on that particular dive, of 109.20, you add that together with the first three dives and Gary Hunt has done it. 411.35 over Jonathan Paredes. Gary Hunt has won the first Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series of this season and the 31st of his unbelievable career. The only guy to ever compete in every Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series competition since it began. And you have no idea what he's been going through since last year. Months and months of dealing with this mental block, losing sleep over it. He made him literally depressed for a period of time, so slowly he had to rebuild himself. And it's such a great thing to see him overcome that moment and to win the competition here in Sissicon. He played the he played the trump card by using high degree of difficulty to take the win here in Sissicon. Final results, Gary Hunt wins the first of his season of 2018. Jonathan Paredes, what an incredible day for the Mexican diver in 2017 champion. And Andy Jones of the United States gets back up on the podium. Blake Aldridge bumped off in fourth. Stephen LeBou of the United States, the World Series leader of 2018 in sixth. There's your ninth through 14th here at the fourth stop of the 2018 Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series from Sissicon, Switzerland. Matthias Oppenzeller doing a great job, the wild card diver as well, but here is the winning dive, Joey. Could you imagine how nervous Gary Hunt would have been performing this dive? You had the anxiety to deal with performing these maneuvers and then seeing Jonathan Paredes, the dive before, drilling the entry, superb execution, almost scoring a 10. Everything was at, was at stake at this particular moment and with this dive. And he did just enough to get the scores required to sneak ahead of Jonathan Paredes. Gary Hunt is back and his twist is back indeed. So Gary Hunt finds his way back to a familiar position. Steven Lobu, however, still remains the World Series leader in 2018. Jonathan Paredes, though, moves from fifth to second. And Gary Hunt, wow, from eighth to third, tied with Mikhail Navratil. Unbelievable. And Blake Aldridge bumps from sixth to fifth. So a lot of guys improving here after the fourth stop of this 2018 series. Isn't that incredible how you can go from eighth position and then in one competition, you win it, and there you are, third place in the series ranking. Yep. And now you're back in the fight for the King Kai Achille Trophy because anything can unfold in the competitions to come. Here's who hashtag Red Bull Cliff Diving today, Joey. Cornelia 
having a good time out there in one of the floaties. Looks like she's on a stand-up paddleboard. Loving everybody weighing in. Somebody with uh, Rhiannon right there. And here's Constantine with Rhiannon. Constantine is an Olympic diver from Romania, and now he's making the transition to cliff diving. Sven. Hey, Sven. He's chilling. Sven's looking pretty relaxed, dude. <laughs> he is, man. 8,200 <laughs> spectators. A sold-out crowd here in Sisicon, Switzerland. And Leonardo. Oh, he got it. Well, how'd he get up there? Hey, he got, he got he the got special the platform. Pass. Even we didn't get the pass for the platform. Leonardo, hey. you're a stud. <laughs> <laughs> wow, fans enjoying it. And folks, it takes a village to put on this international competition, literally with a population of 382 people in this small village of Sisicon. Every single person was involved in this Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series stop. Now we have the Champions Tour through the crowd of Sisicon tonight. There will be some celebrations. You know, like runners run around a track and everybody's in the bleachers. The divers <laughs> cruise around in a boat and everybody's on flamingos and rubber duckies. They are superheroes here today. We're celebrating the 10th anniversary of the series at Sissicon. It was the very, it was one of the tour stops in 2009, the inception of the Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series. Such a humble guy, Gary Hunt, too, when you speak to him. Such an unassuming character. You know, when he yeah. first turned up in 2009, I remember him as this skinny little kid. He's still skinny. So, like He's I still said, skinny so little guy. Un <laughs> unassuming. And then this guy is just a demon in terms of his acrobatic genius, I would like to call it. 31 career victories and 69 stops. He has won nearly half of the events he's entered, Gary Hunt. Get ready for the prize ceremony. Right there. The Alpenhorn. The Alpenhorn is not easy. Jessica McCauley, yet another podium this year, the wild card. And I dare say we're going to see more of her. Very friendly woman. And she's so passionate about the sport of cliff diving. She's literally just touring Europe right now. Big old cowbell. Cheese, chocolate, and cliff diving here in Switzerland. Hey. All the things you need in life. Absolutely. Rihanna Nifflen. And by taking second position here in Sisicon, now she has the lead in the series. I tell just you ahead what, of Adriana Jimenez. It is going to be a battle at the last stop in Pognano Amari, Italy, Joey, with who's going to win that King Kaakili trophy. That's right. So two more competitions for the women. Bosnia and Herzegovina. The town of Mostar will be the next competition for the women. Rhiannon showed us some very complex skill maneuvers. Lassar and Rashad, the mother of three, making her way back to stand as number one in Sisicon. An emotional day for the Canadian Lassar Rashad, the champion for Sisicon. Lisanne Richard, number one. Rihanna Nifflin, the two-time Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series champion. He seems to be back in form, grabs second today. Jesse McCauley, the wild card diver in third.
technical problems right now the song. Excusez-moi, we are not get going with the Canadian anthem, but we will give it another try. I cannot guarantee anything. If we are not able to play the anthem, we will give it another try. Here we go, one more time, National Anthem of Canada. Congratulations to all the women in today's fourth stop from Sissicon, Switzerland. That's right, Trace, all of the women are so impressive facing their fears. But it's great to see how much these moments mean to these women, and especially Lassan Richard. Hours, weeks, months, years of hard work, and it pays off in these moments right here. A toast salute to the greatest cliff divers in the world. Congratulations, ladies. And the 8,200 spectators in this small village enjoying this event after an eight-year hiatus. The men were here in 2009 and 10, and the women, the first appearance at this stop. Andy Jones of the United States, he lands a podium position here at stop number four. Andy Jones was a winner. 2016 at the night event in Dubai. That was a pretty that was spectacular pretty cool. competition. Yeah. Another American finding his way to the podium. It's going to be an interesting one getting that home on the plane. <laughs> Get that through TSA. Yeah. <laughs> Johnny Paredes, what an outstanding day. Almost had the win. The 2017 World Series champion will land on the podium with the silver. And a gold cowbell. Uh, overall standings, Jonathan Paredes. And here he is, Gary Hunt. Win number 31 in his career, 69 events. Congratulations, Hunt. Ladies and gentlemen, for the national anthem, God Save the Queen, UK.
Gary Hunt wins stop number four and the first for him in this 2018 season, the 31st victory of his career on this series. With that, we take it to the next stop, Joey. The series heads 1,200 kilometers directly north of here. It's a pretty cool place on the Opera House in Copenhagen. That's right, Trace will celebrate the 70th tour stop in the history of the, of the series. And we will dive from the Opera House located right in the heart of the city. And this incredible building, the roof, is exactly 27 meters, the perfect height for these cliff divers. It's the midway point of the season. And the fight is on for the King Kai Achille Trophy, the winner of the overall series title. And this event is a great one for the spectators, for boats and floating vessels once again. And all the crowd can gather directly underneath the platform. It will be a spectacular event. And with that, we wrap up stop number four of seven on the 2018 Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series from Sisikon, Switzerland. We hope you join us at the next stop in Denmark. As always, check out redbullcliffdiving.com for more information. So on behalf of Joey Zuber and our entire amazing team, I'm Trace Worthington. Thanks for watching.